Hello everyone, thanks for coming outside me today. Today I want to talk about my Lansky sharpening system and how I sharpen not just my broadheads, but every blade in my house. Going from butter knife dull back to mirror life scary sharp and how I just keep my broadheads maintained throughout the season as well as helping them if they get really dinged up like the blade I'm going to work on today. The blade I'm going to work on today is from 100 grain Magnus Stinger and speaking of Magnus, at the end of this video I would like to do a giveaway and put all the descriptions of how you can join this giveaway. I'm going to be giving away a pack of Magnus Broadheads, putting my own money down on the line. If you're interested, make sure you follow all of those steps. You, whoever the winner is, you can pick whatever Magnus Broadhead product you would like. 100 grain Black Hornet, 125 grain buzz cuts like these are here, whatever you would like in a two blade or four blade, or even if you want the three blade snuffers, whatever you want, my wallet's being put down on the line. That winner will be able to get that. So stick around to the end of the video, figure out what the steps you need to take, and you can be part of that giveaway. Away. All right, so let's get into blade maintenance and blade sharpening. Before we do that, let's understand a few things about how blades work. When you have a single bevel or a double bevel blade, the idea is that you have a cutting plane. So a single bevel plane is usually built on a very steep angle with the cutting edge being close to my wrist here. That is a single bevel. A double bevel obviously comes to that point. Actually, ironically, it would look a lot similar to this Magnus Stinger. And when you come up to the top edge, that would be where the top tip is that would be the cutting angle that very steep angle when you have that double bevel that double bladed which is most common for knives and for broadheads you have to maintain both sides of the bevel a single bevel you only have to maintain one side the main cutting side and just touch up the back side which is flat but on a double bevel it's very important that you're able to maintain both sides of the bevel and that will help you keep that razor sharpness so not only do you have to maintain both sides of the bevel you also have to understand what your bevel actually actually is. So on a single bevel blade, which I don't have any here to represent today, I apologize for that, but on a single bevel blade, usually that bevel is incredibly steep. And on a double bevel, it's a lot smaller, usually in that 20 degree range, 25 degree range for a broadhead. Your kitchen knives could be as close as 14 degrees, very fine fillet knives can be down in there as well. I like to keep mine in that 20 to 25, and I actually prefer to sharpen and retouch up everything at a 25 degree angle and I'll explain why as we go throughout the steps but more importantly is the thing that we need to remember is that the smaller the number the more fine the point and the easier it is to damage the more fine the edge and the easier it is to damage because the further it goes out and out to that point and the smaller that angle gets there's less metal out towards the cutting edge and it's easier to roll over in your kitchen it doesn't matter in the woods it's a big deal and so I like to keep close to a 25 degree angle which opens that up a little bit more adds more metal towards the cutting edge and keeps it a little bit more robust and keeps it from shattering rolling over as easily when it impacts hard things like bone. So we're going to take the worst blade I have in my shop right now which is this Magnus Stinger and you can see the edges of this blade are absolutely rolled over. They are absolutely obliterated. We're going to see if we can bring back this 100 grain blade. It still spins straight but it's just absolutely crushed. I don't know if I'll be able to hunt with it. I'm probably going to have to remove a lot of metal but this is the worst case scenario usually you will see metal that's just a little bit rolled over maybe you'll get a little bit of a chipped edge and that's a lot easier to play with this usually I would not try to resharpen and take back into the woods be removing too much metal the weight might be thrown off it's not gonna weigh 100 grains or 125 grains anymore but just for the sake of this video I want to see if I can bring it back to a mirror like paper shaving uh, sharpness that we all come to expect. So when it comes to using a guided sharpening system, you have the guide and then of course you have the stones. Whether the stones are an oil stone or a diamond stone, it doesn't really matter. The point is that you have an abrasive that's removing metal on both sides of the bevel to keep that bevel coming back to straight and give you a razor edge. When you have a system like the Lansky, this is why I like it so much, you have a guide that is the same on both sides. And you'll see here that they are numbered. So we have uh, everything from 15, 20, 25, and 30 degrees. So our blade's going to go out in the gator clips, uh, close out here to the tip, and then we are going to run the stone on this angle. It's going to run across and it's going to go up through the guides. The actual stones themselves 
look just like this here. They're on these guided rods and they would bring over top of the metal. So here we're in the 25 degree hole. If we want to make it steeper, we would go up to the 30. And if we wanted to make it shallower and a really fine edge, we'd go all the way down to the 15 degree angle, which is pretty steep. I again would not recommend sharpening anything for the woods below 20 degrees. It's just too fragile when it starts to impact difficult things like bone, ribs, or shoulders alike. It's pretty difficult. And then of course, when it passes through the animal, it's basically shot once it hits dirt and rocks and roots on the ground on the other side. Now the Lansky system in of itself with the oil stones, which is what I purchased, it comes with five stones. And you can even see here that closest to my knuckles over here is a very coarse stone. And as we go down, we lose grit, we lose coarseness, and it becomes finer and finer. You see that my honing blade, the yellow one, gets a lot of wear and tear because I usually just end up having to touch up blades. Really, I end up using kind of from like this medium grit, which is this blue one, down to more of a fine and then the ultra fine here. You'll see that these really don't get any uh, use whatsoever. The super coarse and the just regular coarse, they end up taking off a lot of metal and I don't like wasting that type of stone. I'm actually going to show you what I use if I have a super rolled edge and I need to remove a lot of metal. I don't actually use the stones, but I still do use the guide. The Lansky system provides you with three rods. So if you are going to have to change over, you're going to have to uh, take the rod by unloose by loosening the wing nut, taking the rod out and putting it into a different stone. But like I said, I just leave it in the most three common stones, which are kind of my medium grit, my fine grit and my ultra fine for honing. I don't really touch the coarse and ultra coarse. Now, there are also br uh, blocks for serrated knives and you'll see that these are angled. They are actually triangular in their shape and you can get these to put into serrated knives. Now, they do make them in different various uh, grits as well. That there was an ultra fine and here you just have a fine grit here built with that angle. So they have two different angles cut into them and you can use them for serrated knives or for serrated broadheads. So the stones that come with the Lansky system are great, but I don't like to buy stones and replace them if I don't have to. Your oil stones, regardless of which grit they are, will wear down over time and they'll actually kind of develop a bowl or a U shape as you wear out the, uh, basically it's rock, right? Right out of the center and it won't sharpen as well. It won't sharpen as effectively and you'll get frustrated over time. So that's where when it comes to removing large amounts of metal, I will use sandpaper and I don't go any higher here than 100 grit. Remember, Remember with sandpaper, the higher the number, the smaller the particle, and therefore the least gritty it is. Meaning so when you get all the way up to this 600 very fine particles, it's almost smooth. It's almost more of like a, uh, uh, I don't know how to describe it. It's almost more like a cloth feeling than it is of a sandpaper gritty feeling. And this 100 is the most aggressive here that I have. Now, if you go out to your wood shop, you probably have a big pack of wood uh, sandpaper, which would be like 60 to maybe 200 you're going to find that most of those in the lower numbers are too aggressive. They will remove too much metal. They're difficult to work with, and you'll just end up scratching the crap out of your broadheads. I recommend no lower than 100. Really, 150 will about do it, and you'll be able to remove a lot of the hard edge or the rolled over edges on a steel broadhead. I need to stop flapping my gums here. Let's actually get to working on the broadhead. So I have my guide, and I'm simply going to follow my guide's instructions, and I'm going to place the blade inside of the guide. Now, I'll zoom in here close what I'm actually about to do here. I'm not going to, like I said, I'm not going to start with the stone. I'm actually going to start with the sandpaper. And so in order to do that, usually when you're working with a Lansky system, you want to line this up on a straight edge. So you see, I might line it up where the ferrule goes into the broadhead there, and that'll give me a consistently straight edge here that I can work with. I only can sharpen one side of the blade at once. So in this case, we're gonna sharpen this exterior. When we're done with this, we will open the clamp, flip the blade around, and we'll be able to do the other side. So usually I start here at this angle if I'm just gonna use the stones, but I need to remove metal. You can see how we have a huge chunk out of this blade of this broadhead. I don't know if we're able to recover it, but we're still gonna try. I'm actually going to line this up so it is parallel to the jaws of the broadhead. So you see how the jaws of the broadhead here are parallel parallel and the blade is parallel to the jaws or as close as I can get it. This is actually going to help me with step one here, getting the broadhead in place. So my set screw in the back, the red knob is set and I'll show you how I know it's set here in a moment. I'm going to tighten the front screw using a Phillips screwdriver and you can see that I know that it is set because the gap 
between the back and the front and that Phillips head screw, or excuse me, the red knob in the back and the Phillips head screw in the front, that gap is either parallel between the two jaws or it goes fat here and skinny down here. It's a cone shape. I never want to have it open more here and pinch back here. It will never grip this right. My blade will rock and I won't get a consistent angle when I go to use my guide. So I have that nice and level. It's secure. My blade is sitting parallel to the end of the jaws. This is where I want to be. With sandpaper, I like to have a nice hard flat surface. This is just a cheap piece of plywood and I will start by taking the strips of sandpaper. I'm going to start with 100 grit need to be pretty aggressive here and you can tape this down if you want if you really feel that it's going to move on you i'm going to lay this down on the board here now this is a fresh third of a sheet you only need about a third of a sheet here and i'm going to use the guy just like so now this angle here right this is definitely steeper than 30 degrees right if you think about it the top hole which is actually right here, if we go in like this, this actually would be approximately your 30 degrees right around here. We're even steeper than that, okay? We're even steeper at that here because we're actually on top of this guy. We're probably close to, at a minimum, a 35 degree angle. And you might think, well, why do I want to do a 35 degree angle? I'm gonna start sliding this back and forth and starting to remove metal. If I'm supposed to be sharpening close to a 25 to get that mirror smooth razor edge, why am I starting at such a steep angle at 35 degrees? Well, remember, the more you change this pitch, the more this angle gets closer to the edge, closer to full 90 degrees, right? The closer it gets to that, the more you're removing metal right on the cutting edge. If you were to lay this super flat, you're actually removing metal off of the edge of the broadhead that you want to keep. The more you change the pitch closer to 90 degrees, the more metal you're just removing off the edge. So since I just want to remove metal off the edge, off the cutting surface, and save as much on the actual blade of the broadhead itself to sharpen later, I want to start at this steeper angle. If you've ever played with a Hot Wheels car, you can do this next step. It's a lot easier if you lay it down. But basically, I'm just going to keep going back and forth, almost no pressure. And I want to check my broadhead here, and I want to see if I am removing by checking to see if I have scrapes of sandpaper all over it. I can also see here on the sandpaper that I'm starting to collect metal. I'm starting to collect metal right down in here, and I'm starting to scrape off some of the sand as well. So that's how I know I'm starting to remove metal. Now, you want to try to keep the strokes even either side, and you want to make sure that your jig is not rocking. If your jig is rocking, that means that you didn't put that blade in parallel, and you need to make sure the blade's parallel so you don't get any rock, and you're getting full contact. Like I said, if you can play with a Hot Wheels car, you can remove metal from a broad hit. You can see by looking at this, you can actually potentially even see the fuzz of the actual metal that is starting to come off and stick. And you can kind of see right on the edge, it's starting to get shiny. Right on the edge, it's starting to get shiny, right where we have all that hair of that fuzz of that metal. And that's exactly what we want. We want to be removing metal and we want to be removing right as close to the cutting edge as possible. We don't want to be removing it off the main blade. That's going to remove metal in an area. We want to stay structurally strong. We want to remove it right off of the edge. And again, this blade was really, really bad. This was way worse than I would usually work with. Usually this blade would just be reserved for using it as a practice blade, just so I know I had the right aerodynamics. But let's challenge ourselves and see how it goes. I'm starting to add a little bit more pressure here. I can see that I can use a little bit more pressure here. I'm not removing metal too aggressively, even with the, this 100 grit paper. We're starting to get better. That huge divot that was in there, it's not perfect. It's far away from perfect, but it is getting better. The blade is incredibly dull at this point, and that's fine. We are not sharpening, we are removing metal. You might notice that using a stack of uh, paper or, a, rolled up or a, a flat magazine or even a steno book or something like that, just to get a little bit of give, might be a little bit better, and usually it's a little bit quieter too. I'm still giving it a fair amount of pressure. I'm not pushing down on the blade itself. I'm actually pushing back from where I'm holding it. I'm making sure I'm getting everything done right and I'm using the appropriate angle. I'm just gripping it from the back and I'm pushing it forward and pulling it back. I'm not pushing down from up here. I'm pushing forward and pulling back. That's all I'm doing. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Flip it over. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then I check it. Still removing metal, but it's still not there yet. Ever closer. It's still not perfect, but you see now that we are only getting that shiny edge right at the edge, the cutting edge. We're not getting it back towards the main part of the blade that would actually do any cutting. We're only getting it right towards the cutting edge. We're almost there, still a little nick there. I can still see it, I can still feel it. This blade is dull as a butter knife because we are cutting this angle much steeper. This is closer to a 35 degree angle than what Magnus would usually be cut at around a 20 two-ish degree angle. So this is way too steep, it's dulling the edge, and that's okay. We can always go from a steep edge to a fine edge. We can't go from a fine edge to a steep edge. We can't add metal that's not there. But we can go from that really steep 35 degree edge, shave, 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 get down closer to that 22, I like 25 degree angle. All right, well that took about 10 times longer than it usually does. Usually, like I said, if I get a blade that nicked up, I won't reuse it. But we're at a point now where we have gotten to the depth of of that nick and using this still as a practice broadhead plenty uh, it will be plenty sharp when we're probably done with it all right so I'm just gonna work on this edge here I'm not gonna flip around and do the other edge it would just be the exact same process to get all the nicks and rolled edges out and we have left that nice steep 35 degree angle so now at this point I'm gonna loosen up that front screw and I'm going to make this blade so that now I have a straight consistent edge and like I said I like to usually line that up with the center line of where the ferrule would go right uh, there in the middle gap. So I'm going to line up my blade there. That's where I sharpen both the uh, stingers, the buzz cuts, the black hornets, and I will stick the uh, center screw hole right down the center of the Lansky system. So the whole system will look like so. So I will have that uh, blade ferrule lined up there. I'll have the hole where the screw would go through the uh, broadhead blade lined up with all of the holes here on my Lansky system. So now my blade is actually at an angle and I'm now ready to start using the stones. Now this blade did start out pretty nasty. So I am going to go with my medium stone. Now Again, we are going to be removing metal. Now, it's not nearly as much metal removal as before. We're going now from a 35 degree angle down to close to a 25 degree angle. I'm just gonna pick my spot here, 25 degrees, and I'm just gonna simply sit that through the hole there and I can move this around any angle I want. This is going to give me a 25 degree angle on this blade edge. I can only work one edge at a time, meaning this left edge, the right edge is still inside the clamp, but I can flip it over to keep that double bevel. Remember, this is a double bevel blade. So so 25 degrees, I'm going to move back to front on this side, front to back on the other, keeping the strokes consistent. Again, about a medium to light pressure here. I want to feel these first couple of strokes to see if I'm getting into any burrs, which are pieces of rolled metal that are microscopic that you can't see. Okay, I feel a couple there in the center. There's three strokes. Four. There's 20 strokes, and I can kind of take a look here at the edge. We had taken off a lot of metal there with that original 35 degree angle, so it's really hard for me to tell, but I know that I'm cutting now on 25 because I'm definitely guided here on 25. Continue with another even number of strokes. And I can see I am starting to, it's, a, it's hard to tell with, uh, without kind of a trained eye, but I definitely have that, you see that shiny edge is the whole cutting surface. I actually have a double shine. Uh, I can see where I'm starting to take off metal at a different cutting angle than a original 35 degrees. So now I'm gonna flip the head over and now I'm gonna work front to back, still going in the 25 degree hole here. Uh, I can feel the burr, it's like a hrrr, I can feel it clicking over all the little microscopic burrs. You can't see them. You can just hear that grit. That's all the little burrs that I've pushed over to this side of the bevel. And now I'm starting to remove them. That's good. So as you can see, we are starting to remove metal. That's the tiny black fragments that are in there. If you get a stone that's really caked with metal, which this uh, more commonly used one is here, you can take some sort of honing oil. Lansky sells the honing oil with the kit. And just a few drops, and I'll show you again. Here's how caked this one is. See all the black that's in there? The honing oil will penetrate into the stone just a few drops here, maybe one, two, three, four, down the length of the stone here. Simply take my finger and just massage that in. Let that oil get in there and penetrate into the pores of this oil stone here. 
and it's going to start to lift that metal and I'm actually starting to as I run my finger over it it's starting to pull up those metal fragments when you uh, pull out those metal fragments it allows those pores not be clogged and it allows for more abrasion so you're getting a more consistent even sharpness just let this kind of massage it in here nothing fancy and then I can take a piece of paper towel and then I can simply you can see all the nastiness that has started to been pulled out there with a simple wipe and you can see how much cleaner that is. It's so much cleaner. It's not perfect. I can do another uh, swipe over with some more oil, but that's uh, plenty good right there. That removed a lot of that grit right out of that stone and it allowed it to maintain its uh, ability to actually keep things sharp. So again, we're back to doing strokes here either side. I like to run in batches of 10. So 10, 20, 30, 40. If you forget a stroke or two here or there, it's not gonna matter. If you go like 10 strokes off, yeah, it might take you a longer, a little bit longer to catch up. If you're like 20 strokes off, like you forget to do one side 20, then you're gonna be there for a while rolling the edge. And I guess the thing to note here, this is true of all Magnus broadheads and a lot of broadheads on the market today. You'll notice that the tip is actually on a different plane. It's a Tonto tip and it actually gets smaller towards the tip. It's on a different angle. I don't touch the tip and I also don't sharpen the back of the blade on this first go around. I just worry about the meat and potatoes of the main blade. I worry about the backs and the tip at the end. So this is just getting the main sharpness. And quite frankly, particularly with the tip, as long as the tip isn't rolled over and I don't have a tip that I need to uh, resharpen, I actually don't sweat it all that much. Um, the tip in of itself, it's nice to have that little bit of edge to it. Um, but as long as it is piercing and not just a punch point, you know, it is a little bit more cut on contact. It's really been lethal for me. Um, I know everybody might have different opinions. You got to get it razor sharp front and back, tip to tail, so on and so forth. And you know, it, you can spend a lot of time here changing the blade angles and pulling your hair out. The main blade is what's doing 99% of the cutting. And considering I get pass-throughs 99% of the time, uh, the back of the blade there does nothing for me. So I'm starting to see again more of these metal shavings. And again, you can wipe them off on your finger, right? They're, they're all over the place, these metal shavings, okay? And it's good. And I'm starting to remove down more of that burr there. And it's starting to get, it's starting to get sharp. It's not, it's nowhere near uh, ready to go, but it's starting to gain a little bit of nail grabber. And this is not a, an actual test or anything, but this is just, if I, if I take like a hockey, a hockey skater and I go to like slide across the ice to do a hockey stop, same thing's true with your fingernail. If you kind of just real quick kind of slide, it's getting stuck in a few parts of the blade, but not a whole lot. It's still got a way to go here. So I'm just going to keep taking strokes off with this medium uh, stone here and see if I can't bring it back into shape. You got about another 30 strokes in and it's really catching now. Like it's maybe towards the tip it's not here, but back towards this middle portion, it's really starting to catch and really starting to shave. I don't think it's quite ready, but I think we're gonna do it anyway. We're gonna move down in grit. So the further you move down in grit, the more microscopic the metal you're removing. And actually it seems counterintuitive, but the more microscopic, the finer the angle gets and the more severe the sharpness level is. So that's what we're doing here. We wanna make our burrs or the amount of metal we're removing more and more microscopic. And the more and more microscopic they get, the finer that edge gets and the more razor-like it gets. So we're just moving down in stone. We just cleaned the uh, grit out of this one. Same amount of pressure. You can see now that we are really starting to get to a very shiny edge here, a very more mirrored like edge than we were at the beginning where it's very dull, very grayed, very rolled over. We're really starting to lose that little bit of the burr. When the further you move in your angles, the tighter you make your angles get, the more you can remove off of the blade. That's why we wanna start at that steep angle. So I got down here and I'm even removing more of the metal of the blade than I originally was on the original cutting surface. So I'm just gonna keep moving down here with this uh, fine stone, not ultra fine yet. We're not honing that edge. You can tell that when you're needing to move up in grit and move in the honing when you start to just kind of glide. When you start to stop hearing the burrs come off and you're starting to kind of just glide across the blade, you know you're ready to move up to the next level of, uh, or the next uh, fine of grit on your stone. This is starting to look really good. Like I'm super impressed with how this is going so far. Every part of it now is starting to catch. Like every part of it, like when I try to 
dig it into my nail just very lightly. It starts to pick. It actually starts to dig in. It's getting ready for that honing process. And I'm going to take it down to the ultra fine stone. So this is almost uh, like an, uh, uh, I don't know, it's basically smooth. You see, you got a little bit of grit in there. I'm okay with that though. I'm not going to clean that out. That still looks pretty good. Uh, you see, I got a chip out of it because I dropped this oil stone <laughs> very soon after I bought it actually. But it still works because you don't really end up using the full length of the stone anyhow. Going right back to 25 degrees. And again, it's the same thing, very light to medium pressure. You never wanna be digging into the stone with any or the, any of the blade uh, with any of the stones. It's just a very light pressure. And you hear there's a little bit of grit and that's okay. And when I get to the honing process, I would just do 10 and then flip and then 10 and then flip and then 10 and then flip. And this is just to try to wipe that microscopic burr down to nothing. And you'll know when you've got yourself a really good edge because it'll feel like you're sliding the stone across glass. All right, so we get in about 30 strokes either side with that ultra fine stone. Let's see if it's ready for a little bit of a paper test. And all I do for this is I wanna just have a, a real quick, kind of aggressive stroke into the paper. I like to use a stiffer paper, like this kind of target material, or kind of a card stock. And I wanna see if it'll just kind of take off this edge, take off this corner. Nah, it snags, it does more of a tear here. Nah, it's not quite, it wants to. Like it really does want to. And you can try it too. You can try holding it because this will sit upright on itself. You can do that and then push the paper down on top of it. But I can see here that I'm still snagging some paper down in that grip. It's up towards the tip there. I got a little bit more to remove, a little bit more to hone, and a little bit more to be a little bit more finite with. So let's see if we can get that down to a little bit. And quite frankly, I don't get my brawn heads probably as sharp as some of the professional knife sharpeners would do. Um, I've shot some pretty dull broadheads over the years and have had great blood trails, great success. And if you hit them in the right spot, it's fine. I do, however, think that this is sharper than the vast majority of broadheads out there out of the box. Definitely a lot of the mechanical broadheads right out of the box. Uh, Magnus is by far the sharpest broadhead that I have ever handled out of the box from the Black Hornet to the Stingers, the Buds Cuts, the Serrazers. Um, it's not even close how scary sharp those things are coming right out of the package from the factory. So I'll touch them up here. Maybe I'll touch them up here with this fine stone. Other than that, um, really, I just leave them go. So let's hit this up a little bit more. I'm gonna give it like there are 20 strokes either side. All right, so let's see how this will go. Let's see if I can just get this to cut in just straight on the edge. Yeah, it definitely wants to do it. You can see without, you know, I'm not, I'm not mashing it in there. I'm just drawing it across and friction is handling the rest here. Just letting the weight of the broadhead. I'm getting a little bit of a cut here. Let's try at an angle. I'm getting more of a tear here than I really would like, but that's still not terrible. Pardon the terrible dad pun there. That's not too bad there. Again, you can hear that shh, that sound there that you kind of want. Again, it's not perfect there. I'm not getting quite the angle I want. So I keep going back to the sharpening. Now, do I ever go back? Do I ever think, well, once I get uh, to this particular level, this honing level, do I need to go back to remove more metal? The answer is no. Once you get to this point and you've established your edge, which we know we have because we've gotten to a point where our stones are just moving across and doesn't feel like they're doing anything, then we continue to move on and into the finer and finer stones. We just haven't got to a point where it can, you know, do the paper shave. Now, is it going to take a hair or two off my arm? Yeah, it's actually done that. I've done it a little bit off camera here. It's removing some parts of the blade here or moving some of the hair right off my wrist. I've got a couple of bald spots already on here. Um, so that is how I would get it. Now, let's take this blade out and see where we went with this is the more important and I think impressive thing here where we've gone from to what we are at now so let's clean the blade off you can see on the right side we have the old blade you can see this giant rollover mark here this huge dent this huge nick this huge ding and then you see over here ooh, I can feel the sharpness of it there you can you can just see the color difference I mean there's a sharpened well touched up blade this one's barely, I mean, that just looks terrible. Smooth edge. It's not quite that mirror finish we want, but it's very close. And then here it's very chunky, very dull. That's the 
that's the program. That's the system that I want to shoot with. Now, like I said, this was a pretty banged up, pretty beat up broadhead. Like I said, I usually don't usually end up using more than just the fine and the ultra fine stones just to bring it back to life. This one, I mean, I would probably continue to work on this if I really felt the need. I would actually at this point just rather buy a replacement blade and replace that broadhead altogether. If the ferrule's good, this is pretty chewed up. And considering Magnus has a lifetime warranty, I could just get it replaced. Speaking about taking apart broadheads and putting them back together, uh, the Lansky system's great and all, but it doesn't include the ability to pull apart your broadheads, which most are using teeny tiny little screws, either the hex head or in a, the case of Magnus, a Phillips number one that's really small. I'll include a to this down below if I can find it. This is a cobalt tool system and it has all the little bells and whistles of all different types of uh, Phillips and hex head and flat head. The screwdriver itself is really nice because the back cap actually spins so you can put this in your hand and, and spin the screwdriver and the back cap will stay in place and you don't have to sit there and twist, 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 twist. You can just keep it there in your hand and just twist the shank. They are all replaceable. So I keep this set at a Phillips number one and I can take apart any Magnus broadhead that I want in the drop of a hat. If I find this tool in a uh, link, I will put it down in the description below. This is just a handy little tool to have around your shop in general, but then for putting back together broadheads, it is invaluable, stays all nice together just by itself, and it does, basically lives in my Lansky kit, uh, in my sharpening drawer, and it never leaves this shop. All right, if you stuck around this long for the giveaway or you just clicked here in the first place, I give you congratulations. Here's how you would sign up. I'm going to put my money down for any Magnus Broadhead 3-pack that you want, Black Hornet, Serrazers, Stingers, Buzz Cuts, any grain weight, if I can find it and I can buy it, I'll ship it to your house for you. If you're interested, here's what you have to do. Subscribe to this channel, the Average Jack Archery channel, and go over and follow Magnus on either Facebook or Instagram. That'll help you keep up to date with what they're doing. There might be a new broadhead released in 2021. Shh, not that I know anything. Like, why would I know anything? That'd be absolutely ridiculous. But if you're interested, comment down below. What would be your favorite Magnus broadhead if you got to be the winner? Comment down below. Subscribe and comment. Follow Magnus over on Facebook or Instagram if you can. That would really help them out. Helps me out and also gets you up for a pack of free broadheads. When one of the best broadheads, in my opinion, on the market. So that's all for this video. I hope it was informative for you. And if you have any interest in sharpening your broadheads and I left things unanswered, follow the links in the description below. Hit me up on Facebook and Instagram. Send me an email. It's even down there. And of course, you can always leave a comment here on YouTube and also remember to comment if you want to be in part of the uh, giveaway for the Magnus Broadheads. Hope you're able to get outside, enjoy the sport of archery, archery hunting if you so choose. Definitely enjoy God's beautiful creation. Make sure those broadheads are razor sharp and we'll get to see you next time.